Hello Abacus user. Welcome to Abacus Acumen for quick and sound learning. In today's session we are going to do a heat transfer analysis using a conduction mode. So this is uh, friends it's a building up a video. So we are started with a simple uh, copper rod and the mode of heat transfer is through conduction. So right now what you are seeing on the on my screen is a copper rod and the temperature distribution inside the rod and uh, we have specified one end uh, temperature as a 400 Kelvin other end as a 300 Kelvin and we have seen how is the temperature distribution within a rod. So going to a problem definition for today's session. Uh, we are going to do a copper rod conduction heat transfer using Abaca standard. Uh, this particular problem we are going to use a 3D solid element. So it's a 8 noded linear heat transfer brick element which is DC3D8. We are going to use a SI unit. So we are going to use a Kelvin, Kg, meter, Newton and second. Metal property for this particular problem we are going to use a copper conductivity at a room, room temperature 400 watt per meter Kelvin. So since this is a building up video we are just started with a one uh, property at the room temperature but once we get some hands on heat transfer we can uh, define a temperature dependent conductivity. The dimension for rod is uh, uh, diameter is a 0.5 rod length is a 5 meter and we are going to test this uh, Fourier law. So heat transfer is a Ka dt by dx so temperature gradient divided by the length and A is a cross sectional area and K is the thermal conductivity. So we are going to use this, uh, this all parameters and we are going to build a model. So let's get started with the uh, finite element model building. So fr friends let's start uh, building up a model. So I'm going to build the model in Abaca CAE 6.11. So I'll just change the model one name. I'll just change to heat transfer. I'll uh, create a part. So it will be part one 3D deformable solid and extrusion. So we are going to build a 0.5 meter diameter aluminum rod sorry copper rod so approximate size we are going to put uh, 5 so I'll just first create a uh, two points so I'll create uh, 0 comma 0 as a first point and then the other point will be on the perimeter radius so 0.25 will be radius so this will be my second point so I'll just uh, select center and then I'll select a center uh, radius as 0.25 so we have quickly created this uh, circular uh, geometry now we'll just extrude it by 5 meter so we extruded the part by 5 meter now next step uh, we'll create a material so we'll create a material uh, copper thermal conductivity we are going to give so conductivity we are going to give a 400 watts per meter Kelvin which is a conductivity at a room temperature so well guys this is a building up video so we are, we are just using a one conductivity parameter at room temperature but uh, 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 once we uh, start building on this simple uh, tutorial we can use uh, uh, temperature dependent conductivity so once you switch on this tab so you can give a conductivity versus temperature uh, data so that way a specific to that particular temperature conductivity will change so we are define a conductivity now we'll create a section so we'll say solid homogeneous section metal property will assign a copper so uh, right now we done three stage we created a part we extruded the part we created a copper metal uh, material with the 400 watts per meter kelvin uh, conductivity we created a solid section now we'll just assign this section to part so i'll say create and then i'll just select all this part done and then then i'll assign that section one to this so as the section is assigned to specific part guys you can see the color is changed so this part have now section and material so that particular section is assigned 
Now the next step is we are going to go to assembly. So we are going to create an instance. So for the creating instance, we are going to create a dependent uh, instance. So mesh on the part instance. So we have created a dependent instance. So now we have dependent instance. Now uh, we'll first create a step. So we'll go to step and then we'll give some na name. Hit transfer. and we'll select hit transfer uh, as a procedure continue and then you can give some description hit transfer now now you see the tab is on transient we are going to do a steady state hit transfer conduction analysis so i'll just shift to steady state uh, tab now as soon as i shift to steady state tab uh, you can see uh, that there is a, a message come default load variation with time has been changed to ramp linearly over step so as soon as you shift to steady state the temperature is not going to apply instantaneously it is ramp over a time step over a step so just for a just uh, for the sake of uh, understanding on transient one i'll just shift to transient so if you shift to transient, it sh it gives a message that load will apply instantaneously. So it will be no. Uh, in case of transient, load will apply instantaneously. In steady state, it will apply over a period of time. So we created the steady state uh, condition. You have then different parameter on the increment and then other. You can select proper uh, load condition. How load is going to apply? So we have created a step now will create a boundary condition now i'll say create one end we are going to apply a temperature one so which is a 400 degrees c now this is important uh, guys so uh, you see a lot of structural videos where you put a boundary condition in initial step and then you have partially or fully constant in initial step but in case of heat transfer you have to apply this load in a uh, inside a step so there is no uh, initial load condition in terms of a heat transfer so uh, you select a heat transfer uh, step you select a temperature so you select one end you give 400 kelvin as a temperature uniform and amplitude is ramp now i'll just create uh, another uh, temperature 2 I'll uh, give 300 Kelvin so we uh, right now uh, friends we created part we created material property we created a section we assigned the section to the part we created the in assembly a instant now we gone and created a first step after the step we created the two boundary condition now we'll shift to a mesh model so I'll shift to the mesh model. So, mesh model we are going to go into part. It's a dependent instant. So, we'll select uh, mesh. Now, I gone into a mesh uh, panel in part. So, you see mesh heat transfer. Now, object is part, not assembly. So, you have to shift to a part here. If you if you are in assembly mode then you will not able to assign the element type or you will not able to mesh it so you have to shift to a part mode so you go you shift it to part mode then you go to the the mesh panel now we are in meshing so we are going to first select appropriate element type so appropriate element type for this is a eight loaded linear heat transfer element which is a dc3 element we are going to choose so we'll go to standard we'll select a heat transfer so dc3 d8 so it's a eight noded linear uh, heat transfer brick element we have selected now uh, we'll assign uh, the the mini uh, the meshing parameter so we are going to assign the uh, minimum uh, element size so go to seed you select a part now approximate global size we are going to put a 0 0.05 here so you select a part which is a quite fine mesh for this particular problem for heat transfer problem so we are done with that and then you go to mesh and you say part mesh it so then uh, we got a quite a bit uh, good mesh so now now everything is ready we have part which is mesh vq and boundary condition so 
let's create a job so I, I'm going to analysis parameter uh, panel I'll just create um, I'll just create uh, hit uh, transfer copper rod and then model is continue so we created now now um, I'll just submit for run so let's submit for run um, it is giving some warning history output is not required in shape uh, right now we are just just uh, looking into how a temperature variation we don't want uh, any history output right now so you say yes and let it uh, go for run completed a run successfully now uh, we have applied the results in uh, abacus weaver so this is how the temperature variation looks like so one end we are given a 400 uh, kelvin other end we are given a 300 kelvin and this is how is the temperature varying over the length uh, of a copper rod so um, this is simple uh, conduction problem so we'll build next video be a bit complex on this will uh, include the convection heat transfer uh, into model so that way you can understand now with conduction and convection so guys go ahead and do this uh, simple heat transfer uh, tutorial hands-on learn uh, on a conduction parameter um, we'll come up with next video which will have uh, conduction and convection don't forget to like us or subscribe us uh, to take this project forward we need your support so please subscribers thanks bye bye